In this video, I'm going to explain the endurance limit of a material by drawing the SN curve. Now, in the exam, uh, you may be shown a picture of a tibial poly which has undergone catastrophic failure, and you may be asked why has this happened. And this is where you take your opportunity to draw the SN curve, which is the stress number of cycles curve. And on the y-axis, it's the log of stress and here you have the number of cycles uh, in, in, in millions of cycles. And the SN curve takes a gentle curve like this, but it's, it plateaus. And where it plateaus is described as the endurance limit of the material. And of an orthopedic material, this is arbitrarily set at 10 million cycles because clearly you can't uh, indefinitely load uh, a material infinite times to to see uh, when when it fails now most orthopedic manufacturers will uh, say on their uh, implant that their implant can withstand uh, approximately a million cycles per year so if it can uh, withstand 10 million cycles, it should last 10 years. However, you can see that if a material is stressed in an environment which is in a high stress environment, you can see that it's going to need uh, a much less number of cycles before it fails uh, because it's operating above the endurance limit of the material. Conversely, if a material operates much lower than the endurance limit, then technically it can last an infinite number of cycles. So why is this clinically important? Well, um, you, you, may be, you may be asked, well, what, what's the different uh, types of poly that we use in total knee replacements compared to total hip replacements? So in a uh, total hip replacement, you can imagine that the polyethylene cup and your femoral head component. Um, in this environment, and it's important to understand that materials uh, operate, uh, orthopedic materials will operate in different environments. They'll operate in environments in high stress and operate environments in low stress. In a total hip replacement, you have a very high contact surface area between the femoral head and the polyethylene insert. With the high contact areas, you have low contact stresses. So in a low contact stress environment, you'll be operating in an environment down here. So this is, will be your hip poly. And therefore, it is very likely that this will last a very long time because it's operating below the endurance limit. Conversely, in a knee replacement, you have a almost like a, a round on flat design. So if this is your tibial polyethylene tray and this is your femoral condyle, you have an environment where you have very low contact area and therefore very high contact stresses. So this polyethylene insert will be operating somewhere up here. So this is your total knee replacement poly. So if it's operating above or at the level even of the endurance limit, it will only last a finite amount of time or a finite number of cycles before it undergoes catastrophic failure. So it's important to know that in a total knee replacement, it's a different environment compared to a total hip replacement, which is why in a total hip replacement, the important properties of the polyethylene isn't fatigue resistance because it operates in low stresses, the important properties are that of increased wear properties. 
which is why in a total hip replacement you're more likely to see uh, a cross-linked polyethylene which has much better wear properties but less fatigue resistance. However, in a total knee replacement, you're more likely to see a ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which exhibits a much higher ultimate tensile strength and therefore better fatigue resistance, but it does have worse wear properties. And the reason for this is, as I've explained, is because in a total knee replacement, it operates in a much higher stress environment which is why it needs better fatigue resistance in an ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene. I hope that makes sense.